Welcome to the Back Nine Six Pack with Mitch and Justin. Let's roll. Hello and welcome to episode 21 of the Back Nine Six Pack. My name is Mitch, joined as always by my esteemed colleague Justin. Uh, let's just start it off. Cheers to the pod. Legal drinking age. Yes. Let's go. Hold on. Let me. I'll tell you. Seriously, though, like I've become addicted to garage beer with lime. Welcome. Um, welcome. Well, it's just so good. I mean, it's like refreshing. It's a nice change of pace from Miller Lite, which I look, I'm never going to replace Miller Lite, but it's good. Yeah. This is my summer beer this year for sure. Uh, and you know what? It's like. You know the pod's twenty one. We're taking it's dad's taking the kid to the garage, cracking our first yeah, beer together. That's exactly it's that's it's such a good name, a good marketing. Oh yeah, great marketing actually. Hundred uh, percent. Well, you did play a little bit of golf. We need to talk about, but first, first things first. Yes, it's Hall of Fame weekend, baby. <laughs> it is, and, I, and I'll tell you, it finally feels like it's sinking in. Like I, I'm look, I was not like not excited about it. Uh, But now that it's, like, here, and I know it's going to be a great night. Like, a lot of people are coming back. Yeah. A lot of guys showing up for it. Our old coach is showing up for it. Shout out John Caesar. Um, Maybe a few drinks afterwards. It's, It's sinking in, and I'm really, really excited about Friday now. So, not that I wasn't excited about it before, but. No, no doubt. And we're. Tacking on a little Saturday morning golf with some of her old uh, teammates and just to continue the celebration from Friday night on through the weekend, basically. Absolutely. And then, yeah, and we're going to be in the same group because I just texted Nick today and told him I think we could have a pretty good game in our group with a certain other person as my partner. So, <laughs> a certain other person. <laughs> we won't name him. Okay. He's pissing me off lately. Classic. <laughs> so. Uh, uh yeah no just that's nah, going to be a great um, weekend though it it was funny when I went back and looked at like the bio and stuff and all that that you sent and I was like you're going in here with a dude that played football at Notre Dame <laughs> and I'm just like <laughs> looking at those but, two pictures side by side oh it's it's just makes me laugh I mean it, it's so funny and and a lot of Notre Dame fans like remember Jared yeah he was a fan favorite for sure yeah and. Like, like I had someone I was talking to, they were like, oh, yeah, you're going in the Hall of Fame with Jared Grace. I'm like, yeah, I am, actually, yeah. Uh, we're pretty much peers when it comes to athletic uh, accomplishments. Absolutely. I'm, I'm kidding, but. Just look um, at those two uh, <laughs> high school headshots side by side, and you'll Did you'll he know. ever win an individual GMC title? <laughs> Not an individual one, I don't <laughs> yeah, think. he won. Yeah. Although he probably won some track thing we don't know. Yeah, about exactly, else, exactly. No, I'm looking forward to it, and, and we just got a whole weekend we're just going to turn it into Sunday for our fantasy draft. Yep. And then, then the, we uh, cook out after that, and God, this is going to be – I'm going to be just a blast. hated in my house. Oh, and I've got Friday off too, so – Oh, my God. I just – I full send, make it a four-day weekend. <sighs> I mean, you might as well. Yeah. That's the smart use of your vacation time. Yeah. So let's let's flash back to, to Wednesday. And actually, let's start at last week's pod. Oh, hold uh, on. We we did miss something. Okay. Because I, I checked off another one of my goals from my yearly thing. I came. I got a top five in yeah, the mid Yeah, that's what I was setting you up for. Oh, okay. Go, continue. You said you wanted to be to have a top five yeah, in yeah. the GCGA mid amp. Yep. We got that. We checked it off the list. We rocked them. Um, three bad holes. I mean, I took a triple on Tuesday. Look, you were, I don't know, what would that be? The 30, your 31st hole, maybe? Yeah. You're standing on the 31st hole with a one shot deficit. With a one shot deficit, after like being, a legitimate chance to win. After being down four to start the day, and then actually I was down seven after three holes. Uh, looking at your scorecard, did you get the back nine six back? I didn't. <laughs> I we, we okay. Look, I'm not going to name names. I had a guy in my group that was very slow. Okay, we at one point were. And look, ever at least the people I know that listen that had played golf with me know how good you know how quick of a player I am. Like I barely take practice swings. The ball's pew, it's teed up, boom, out. Yeah. Um, we were two and a half holes behind. I was also playing with another guy that was a super fast player. 
and we got two and a half holes behind, and we just did not have time to swing by the clubhouse. Like I wanted to, I did. I started playing. Yeah, I, started I only the back say nine. that because you <laughs> what birdie two your first three there. Yeah, yeah. Should have had three birdies in a row. Matt, I like clo- you're, the other guy you were chasing doubled a couple holes in there. He closed yeah. the gap. It was. I checked it and immediately texted guys, and then I believe what, was it a double or a triple? You <laughs> it was took? a double. Okay, yeah. immediate double after I sent the screenshot. And that was the story of the tournament. Like, it wasn't bad ever, other than like three bad swings. That's really all it came for me. That's all it came down to was three bad swings cost me five shots, and I lost by four. When you how many you only hit one ball out of bounds for the thirty six holes? Yeah. Which on that course is somewhat impressive. Yeah, and I made par, and that's what I mean. So you, the, the, the oh no, I hit two out of bounds. Excuse okay, me. I two. hit two out of bounds, one each day. Okay, one I made bogey on, one I made par on. So those weren't even my blow up holes, Jeez. which is that's what I'm saying. It's incredible, like, it's I mean, somewhat frustrating, maybe. Yeah. Oh, it's extremely frustrating. I was like, I wish I would have just hit balls out of bounds. It would have felt better. Yeah. But it's like making bad swings and then not having a lost ball slash penalty shot and making those scores just makes it all the worst. Mm-hmm. But I I came out of I texted you guys on Wednesday when we got done. I was like, look, I became a better tournament player today. In years past I'd playing these things. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm not even in the same stadium as some of these better golfers. And I like it I truly I'm like now I have like so much self belief that I one, I belong in those groups, right? Like with the final groups, and I belong with those guys that we consider some of the top amateur golfers of the city. Like I belong there. Like I know that now. Like I, I and I think before, if you'd ask me, like I'm, I'm playing it, I'm playing in these tournaments because they're at nice courses, and I like to play tournament golf. Now I'm like full mind switch of, you know, I play with a guy on Wednesday that is arguably the best. He's definitely the best mid am golfer in Cincinnati. Even he won, but before that, you probably could have argued that. And I mean, he's probably, if college kids included, probably a top four or five golfer in the city. And to kind of go toe to toe with him, you know, at the same course and and make a comeback like that, I I'm like I'm full all in. Like I know I belong there, and we'll see what it does. I don't. I mean, I'm 33 years old. Like I could get really bad next year. Like you just don't know when that's coming, when that time's coming. But I'm 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 excited about next year now. So Ugh, love to hear that. God, that gets me excited. Uh, I just you just need it. Sometimes you just need to like see your progress in action. And I definitely saw. I you know I didn't blow after my blow up holes. Like it, I came back. Like I like I think after Dude. every blow up hole, I birdied the next hole. Yeah, there's only I think only one of them that you didn't. But yeah, I was looking back at your score and I'm like, my God, the triple yeah. triple birdie, <laughs> double birdie, like on yeah. repeat. Yeah. So that's just my take from it. I just I'm I'm excited about next year and I really want to like work hard on some things that I know I need to work on. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like to me, I'm you know, I'm two swings, three swings away from winning that tournament when three years ago I probably would have never had a chance. Yeah. So no, it's awesome. It was it was fun to track, and like I said, I sorry I was the, <laughs> yeah, the kill did. shot with the screenshot. I do You've it done all that a couple of times, not not just with me, but no, I other did it people. to Kevin and Jay, and yeah, that I one I said oh, I was like, oh man, here they uh, come, and then boom, double, just yeah. instant karma. Yeah, oh, I need to stop that. Yeah, no more text. Just thinking in your head. Just don't send. Put it in text form. Yeah, it's like a no hitter, right? You just don't talk about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, just don't talk. Just about don't it. talk about it. <laughs> uh, it well. So you rolled that Wednesday performance straight into league night. <laughs> like the true rat bastard you are. Double skins night. D- what happened on hole two? So I hit a perfect drive. Like just killed it. I wasn't playing good. We played uh, what they call, I was referring to it as the clean version, the Mitch ball. Where one, one every every three holes... You know, every four or excuse me, every fourth hole, your ball counted, and you were the only you had to count that score. Yeah, and which so is an some interesting holes, format for sure. You know, and then you would count the other one out of the other three guys in your group. You'd yeah. count one net ball. Um, and I just come off doubling one of my solo holes. Yeah, just killed a drive. I had like thirty yards left. Little chip shot. Uh. 
my partner Tim, or guy in my group, Tim, hits a beautiful shot from like 120 to like three feet. My line is like outside of his ball. Like he's right on line with the pin, but it breaks pretty severe left. Yeah. So I had to kind of play it out to the right and like let it come down. And I hit this like perfect like low pitch shot that I know is going to have spin. It's going to take one hop and stop. Well, it takes the first hop, <laughs> hits his ball, <laughs> kicks towards the hole, and it sits there. And I was like, oh, and then it drops. Oh my God. And we started going crazy. People on six green saw it. And I was just like, well, I suck tonight. I'm tired. But that's almost – that is a guaranteed skin. I mean, yeah. yeah, there's – at that point, I was like, I don't even care what happens the rest of the night. <laughs> so, Unbelievable. How many total skins were there? Uh, Three. Yeah. So, so 216. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, many people – $216 skin. Many so. people reaching out, calling you Mr. Double Pot. You know, not even <laughs> – you know, the birth of your child can stop you from a Double Pot skins <laughs> night. Some people saying you're the rat king. I mean, I don't know. These are just things I'm hearing. I like I like it. I love the yeah. hate. I love it. Oh my god. Cuz well, it, I mean it could have been worse. What was it? 2 years ago, I it was a double pot night and I was the only skin. Yeah. So That's what I'm saying. You you have a propensity to do this crap. Uh, uh my, so my group in that format like you're talking about, we started on an 8 par 5. Uh two net eagles. Four under on the first hole, we're like, all right, let's go. Uh, we shot five under total. <laughs> oh, God. We were, we that were, it kind of sounds like how our group went about it, too. I mean, we were two, like, on the balls that, like, had to count. We were two under as a group on that ball, good, which is pretty our, good. Our solo hole was killing us. But it was like the or the other three guys not having the score count, it was like a fight for bogey. Oh, <laughs> so we just, like, didn't do anything after that first hole. <laughs> I myself, I was one under through the first three. Immediate triple on two, your eagle hole. I snapped it left in the trees. And that and was your hole, wasn't it? No, one. Oh, it wasn't. I was oh, the okay. I was the A in my group, so I had the, the three holes like you did. Yeah, that's a tough game. I was even on mine, so I was It really is impressed. a tough game, though, because that's how we started out. We Our our solo holes, it was like we went birdie, eagle, par, mm-hmm. I think birdie. And then the fall, then it went double, double. Triple. Yeah, we didn't have any blow ups like, on bad. on the ball that had to count. It was like trying to get one other person just to throw something down that was worthwhile. <laughs> was a struggle. Like the whole I eagled our our solo guy doubled, so we played that even far. So right. actually, he tripled net doubled. Oh god, but, that hurts. Yeah, that was a fun game though. I liked that. I've never played anything like that. Neither did I. That, that was a good format. I uh, that'd be something fun to do, like just on a weekend game or whatever. Oh yeah, that would be a blast. Yeah, yeah that would be good if you had like four, yeah, four people per group. Yeah, right. Um, member guests was Friday. Uh, oh my god, it was so hot. Who did uh, who did Cody play with? Uh, Sparky, our guy Sparky. Oh well, no wonder they won. And I oh I, I mean I I wish I'd have laid the hammer down on them on yeah. paramutuals. I I did bet on them, but we only bet them four across. I wish I should have bet ten across because I I came in I was I I only bet on like two other groups because I was like that's the team to beat. It's, I said if Cody can keep it in the fairway and Sparky's playing from eighty yards instead of one hundred and fifty, they're going to be almost impossible to beat because yeah. Sparky already shoots seventy two from one hundred and fifty yards out every hole. So I think they won by three. Yeah, but it was so hot and it took forever. That's I heard. And I think part of it was that it was 155 degrees outside. Oh, I'm sure. That we were on the cusp of the devil's ass crack. <laughs> and I had to change. I sweated through my shoes. I had to change shoes after like nine holes. Oh, after nine? Yeah. That's bad. It was bad. No shirt change? Yeah, I did actually change okay. shirts when I got there. Like I I'd like started warm, like walked around and I had a blue shirt on. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> and I was like already sweating through it. I was like, I got to change into something like white or just something that's not going to be like reflecting sun or absorbing sun all day. So, sure. but it was a, yeah, it was the same format as our McGonagall, you know, the nine, nine, nine format, yep. which was, that was a great change. You felt like you got a whole day out there rather than, you know, a short 18 hole member guest, but yeah, Holy God, it took forever to play. What, uh, so you and John were defending. How'd you guys end up playing? Uh, I think we came in like 15th. We just missed so many putts. I mean, in the mm-hmm. alternate shot, I think we missed, Four, we had a double, which from green side, like we had, we were just off the back of the green made double. 
You didn't and make a quad though, so that's good. We did not make quad. <laughs> we did not make quad, and we thought we were going to get it rolling. John makes a bomb on the fifth hole in our alternate shot, gets us back to even. And then this was like the parade of missing short putts. It was like missed like a five. I missed like a five footer, and then the next hole we missed like a. 10 footer and then the next hole we missed like a three footer for birdie mm. and then nine we missed like a two or three footer again it was just like this is not and then scramble was like well maybe we'll start putting better in the scramble no we didn't <laughs> <laughs> we did not start putting better in the scramble yeah. we took a bogey in a scramble we took a three putt in the scramble all right what happened i gotta ask this is the theme what happened on one red anything cool um yeah i hit driver okay and i hit it to 45 yards okay uh, I'm not trying to taste it. I'm Ryan. not trying taste to taste it, Ryan. <laughs> I'm not trying to call John out here, but he like laid the sod a little bit, but we still made yeah. par. I, I, he didn't lay the sod. He just chunked it, came up a little short from like 45 or 50 yards. And then I chipped it up and we made par, but I did hit driver. I look, it's his negative attitude. John was fine with me hitting driver. And guess where I hit it right down. Perfect cut around the corner, 45 yards out. I get someone back there judging my my club selection. I hit it into the tall weeds on the right. That's the common. He is the common denominator between being a good drive and a bad drive. We're gonna have to whenever we get the this video together. We're gonna. I don't know if Ryan's presence is allowed. We need like a a true like control. You know what I mean? We can't have any he cannot in, outside there. influence. There's no, no, he cannot be there because one, he's gonna be talking shit the entire time. A part of see, I don't know if that we'll we'll talk about that. We need to figure out if that's <laughs> does that add value or not. I think it might. I think it might. And it might. And maybe we bring them in for half of them, like yeah. him back there judging my, you know, judging me hitting driver. Yeah, that we'll might see. be like it yeah, be, it's the placebo. Of, yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh uh, man. Uh, okay. Well, we already mentioned the weekend we're having. I'm not playing on Labor Day, but you're playing Labor Day. Yeah. What that, What's the format for it's that? Sc- it's scramble. Just a regular scramble. Okay. Again, ABCD. ABCD. Yep. Yeah. Damn. I'm Draft right. the players. Um, I don't think you guys played last Labor Day either. Uh, I think I might have. I can't remember. I, I so I was on the winning team last Labor Day, but I didn't have. I, if you guys played, I didn't have any of you on my team. Yeah, maybe I didn't. I think it's just a general rule of thumb after coming off a of draft day. That yeah, I, I, I shouldn't that, play. I golf. really think that is it. I, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, we go to my house for the draft, so I have like a little more leeway because I'm like at home. Yeah, and I'm like not anywhere. You know, it's not like they can see me if they want. So maybe that's where my leeway is. I am skipping league this Wednesday to be able to play in that. That was my that was my compromise. Okay, so I respect it. Uh, you couldn't skip last week, though. I mean. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, I, they could have wheeled me on their wheelchair, and I would have played the last oh, week. <laughs> Speaking uh, of the draft, I got our uh, draft board came the other day. I'm Haven't sorry. opened it yet, but it's there. I this is the time of year where I start to get anxiety because I do like a custom schedule for us, and that is such a it's like doing the world's hardest Sudoku puzzle. <laughs> I don't know why it's so difficult. I don't know. But I don't is. know why you started doing custom games. Like custom schedules, but because it's sweet, because we have we do have rivalries. rivalry weeks. You know, I play against my brother week one and week what thirteen, right? Yeah, or fourteen now, These however the playoffs work. And then I do it so that those other like because you have to have more. I think you have two or three like people that you play twice. Yeah, yeah. So I do it based on the standing. So then like like the whoever won would play the second place team in yeah, one yeah, of those yeah. weeks, yep. et cetera, et cetera. So. I don't know. It's just like a fun little wrinkle. Yeah, I, I mean, this weekend, it. like Labor Day weekend, is, although is sad because it's the proverbial end I know. of the summer, I know. but there is light at the end of the tunnel as soon as, <laughs> really, this weekend, college football is full-blown kicking off. Uh, yeah, we and it kicked off. college oh, football. There's nothing you love more than when you place your first college football like, bet. Like, legit. I don't even count this weekend. I counted I, it. My bank account that. counts it. Yeah, oh, Mr. Oh, Notre Dame's not covering shit today, and then just <laughs> oh, cover the first it. half and the full game. Spread. I'm, I'm I'm writing a letter to my senator to uh, defund the, the Naval Academy immediately. <laughs> <laughs> At least the football team, anyway. What are uh, we doing? Tax... My tax dollars backfired on me. This is bullshit. <laughs> so they could go get their ass beat in Dublin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, you know what? Respect to the Naval Academies. Uh, Susie's cousin is gonna is playing at Army, so. 
I didn't I say anything about the army. I just said we're going to defund the Naval Academy. Well, there you go. That works. West Point can stay. Cool. <laughs> West Point's cool with you. All right. Uh, there's no good transition here, but we're... <laughs> Tour championship. Uh, Victor Things Hovland. that need to be defunded. I'm just kidding. Yeah, maybe. Uh, there might be. They're getting super funded, actually, is what's yeah, happening, I think. That, yeah, it's going the opposite direction. Yeah, the opposite direction. Uh Victor Hovland just on a heater right now. If there was more, it kind of stinks for him to do. I mean, look, double-edged sword, $18 million, obviously awesome. Would he have preferred to maybe win a major or two? Maybe, probably. I would I would say if you asked him, would he trade the BMW for a major? Probably. But that $18 Because that's million, 3.8, but it's like $18.6 million. I would be hard-pressed to see any guy that would trade that for a major. Yeah. Like a Phil Mickelson would trade it for a US Open because, you know, he's won. Yeah, that's all the true. Money that's a good world. point. There's a difference between, like, if it's like. But a, he's 24 years old or yeah. 25, right? 25. Um, um, he's got a long career ahead of him to win one of those. So, uh, yeah, I mean, three wins this year, won the Memorial, BMW Championship, and the Tour Championship, just hoovering up money. I mean, he is the. He's, What's that? That alone is like, what, probably like 25 million, something like that? Because Memorial was a designated event, Someone too. said that he was his total winnings were like over $30 million this year. Had to be, just by yep. how well he played. Plus the 18.6, it was over $30 million. I think I, he, he only missed, I don't even think he missed no, he a didn't, cut. No, he didn't. I was just going to say, I don't think he missed a cut the whole so season. So he got a paycheck every tournament. He had 23 starts and 23 cut made cuts. Yeah. Just an absurd, like, the, we talked about it when and we And I, I want to say he had 18 top 20s or something like that. It was something ridiculous. I'm sure it was. Uh, he, for me, is definitely the guy that kind of raised his floor we always knew the ceiling was in there but like just massive improvement the floor uh, seems like he's gonna be a top three player for the time for as long as we can probably see yeah and i mean like they all the talk was about how he's improved the chipping right like i mean we knew it was still kind of a problem but as long as he's like not losing strokes yeah he's just kind of hovering around average i mean the way he hits the ball and he's not he's a good putter too so like And again, it's just on Bermuda, though. Like, he did – I mean, the chip he hit on Sunday, what was it, on 14? When he was just short of the green, he, he like, he chunked it. I mean, he got it to 25 – now he made the putt. Again, didn't lose a stroke, right? Like, he didn't lose strokes. Um, But he definitely chunked it. But when he was hitting the ball so well, yeah, and he was making so many putts that I don't think it was really going to matter if he took a bogey somewhere. You know, he was going to make it up. Yeah. So – no, it's just a crazy run. And he's like, I mean, what an awesome dude. Just like super likable, easy to root for. Yeah. It, like there's so many guys that at some point have done something. And he might still do something where you're like, oh, okay. Like there it is. You yeah. know, he's like not done anything that would make you mad or make you like maybe not like him that much. Like Speeth does stuff like Speeth wines, right? That's like his trait that I'm like not crazy about. Um, I don't think i don't think he does anything like that like no. not that i've seen anyway he's I don't got know. like the most chill attitude just super it seems super positive yeah and yeah and shout out to him like hugging the cops on the way out i thought that was super cool i, I don't know the story that. behind that there's got to be a story but him and the cop on the way after he finished out and was walking to do a scorecard he like hugged to the cop and i don't know if he was with him all week maybe he was maybe. um but I thought that was super cool. The only thing I saw was like when it's, you know, he's doing all these interviews and stuff after and it's pitch black out there. Somebody hands him like a bag of like like chips and guac and he's just like hammering chips and guac, (laughs) walking from pressing to pressing. He's so hard. If there's anybody, I would find it hard pressed that there's someone out there that hates him. Oh, it can't be. Now I'm going to hate him during the Ryder Cup when I feel like he's probably going to He's probably going to cause some serious issues in the Ryder Cup. He should. And I'll hate him then, but it's not going to be anything personality-wise that yeah. I'm going to hate about him. So. He should, but I, I also, it's a month away, coming yeah. off a big year. You never know. You get a little complacent. and Maybe go on vacation. Who knows? But yeah, he could be an absolute terror yeah. for the U.S. Team, yep. No doubt. Uh, so the guy he beat, Xander... They both would have. They were both shot nineteen under. Yeah, it'd have been but, a playoff. Yeah, the starting strokes. You know, Victor wins by the five that he was spotted at the start. Um, Xander just he absolutely beats up Eastlake. Yeah, 
And I also don't get him either. I don't get him because he plays so well there. And he's so good. Like, you see this, right? Like, what he did this week. And you just, it blows your mind why he hasn't won more than he has. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't get it either. And he's like, so, uh, because him and Cantlay are always, like, compared, their yeah, buddies, they're, whatever, yeah, all yeah. that, they get lumped in the same group. But, like, Xander's been, I think, more competitive more often. But Cantlay has gotten it done, like, at least in the FedEx Cup playoffs, right? Yes. Xander just hasn't, like, what's his biggest win? I mean, I know he's won the tour championship, but he didn't win the FedEx Cup when he yeah, won. Yeah, he that. didn't win the FedEx Cup that year. He um, won he won the gold medal, but I mean that was a super watered down field in the Olympics. I don't I don't I don't know. I'm sorry. Honestly, him and Victor were kinda of in the same boat until now. Yeah. Obviously this year. It was you know, Victor had a couple of victories, but you're like, Oh, you won at Mayakoba. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like you won in Puerto Rico. Okay. You know, no offense, my boy Joel Damon. Joel Damon won in Puerto Rico, right? It's like, <laughs> right? You know, so it's obviously a opposite field event. But I feel like they were in the same boat, and obviously Victor's taken that leap and actually won big tournaments. But I don't know. I don't know what he's won that. Like other than the Olympics, as far as like what it means, yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, he's got that, and you know, no, one, there's not a lot of people that can say. No, him and Justin Rose. Yeah, <laughs> and then whoever won it back in like the early 1900s yeah, right. when they used to have golf. But yeah, I don't know. I I can't. I could not think of a tournament that he's won off the top of my head. He won the Scottish a couple years ago, right? He won the Scottish and the Travelers back to back last year. But and honestly, I think the Scottish is probably his biggest win. I'm sure there's something. There has to be one. More I, I doubt. I don't think so. But maybe not. I don't know. Um, yeah, he's just always there, but never feels like he's threatening to win something big you know what i mean but he's so good i know (laughs) it's crazy i don't get it and it's not like he's missing a ton of cuts either like he's making cuts and he's making good money like straight up like if you just look at the american golfers how many guys are you picking before xander if you're just drafting like i think you would say scotty but then again you gotta sweat his putter (laughs) probably two maybe one like the way they're playing right now, you're not putting Spieth in front of them. No, you're not, not putting JT close. in front of them. You're not putting Cantley in front of them. Cantley didn't really have that great of a year. I mean, he's probably two. Uh, <laughs> I honestly think he might be the second best American golfer, and we like never talk about him because I know. I, it's wild. But he he doesn't win. He does make a lot of cuts, and he does have a lot of top tens. But as far as winning goes, he hasn't done a whole lot of it. It's crazy. It, it does. It blows my mind. But he walked away with six point five this yeah, weekend. Six and a half million. To, I'll take. I'll take his his uh, resume right now. <laughs> so no doubt. <laughs> uh, dude, good on Wyndham Clark. Finished third, five million bucks. I mean, what a year for him too. I I guess at this point, going until it stops, like uh, he's gone up a tier or three, maybe like. In terms of, I mean, well, hell, if you even ask people before the U.S. Open who's Wyndham Clark, I bet ninety percent of golf fans would be like, uh, I don't know. Is yeah, I mean, we on, can. Is he on the PGA Tour? Like they, a lot of average golf fans would have, not even average, above average golf fans probably would have never known who Wyndham Clark is. No, before this is literally a guy last year. If you play like DraftKings golf, like the six K range is sort of like the bottom tier of players. Yeah, like he'd be like that guy. You're like, all right, he makes a ton of birdies. He's like six sixty eight hundred. I'll throw in my lineup. Yep. Like a year ago, yeah. Now and he's, now, look at him. He's probably twelve thousand dollars in the. He same might game. be if we whenever we do a in like end of season review thing, like he might be my pick for like who has jumped the highest. Yeah, or like yeah. what who's gotten the most out be. of this year. It's crazy, and that's even with Victor doing what Victor did, but Victor didn't win a major. And Victor is kind of expected. Yeah, and he, it's kind he, of more like win, knew. not yeah. if. Yeah, mm-hmm. Wyndham Clark has made like massive gains on approach when he. That was always his iron game was always he could hit it far and he could putt. Yeah. But the Nothing iron game between, has come along yeah. this year, so crazy season for him. Uh playoff Patty, obviously gonna get a top five. Three million for him. I don't have much else to say about him other than mm, boring. I know, but still like <laughs> I know I, I, he kind of came out of nowhere the last couple of tournaments and started playing actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, respectable. Him and Xander are gonna be 
should be dominant at the Ryder Cup unless they run into some buzzsaws. Like, that's probably the most formidable team we have going. Probably. Like, as far as both guys being... They have a ton of history together. Pretty reliable. Both of them playing well at the moment. Yeah, pretty reliable guys. Uh, Man, you just glazed right over Rory. I totally did. I think that... (laughs) That's because he didn't... Look, number one, I'm a little... The whole injury thing with golf sucks. Okay, yeah. For betting purposes. uh, Yep. I didn't have anything crazy, but there was like some FanDuel boosts and stuff like where you could get like, you know, whatever three guys to come inside the top five or whatever parlay. And like, these are not bets I would have made had I known Rory McIlroy had not hit a golf ball all week because he hurt his back. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't play until Thursday. Yeah. I don't think he played any practice rounds or anything like that. So honestly for him to come in fourth, he started in third, pretty much just kind of held serve, did what he could do with the back being what it was uh, to cash for 4 million bucks. So, but who knows if he's healthy, could have been someone See, right but that's there. That's my thing is, Sometimes I get a little mad about the whole like injury thing. Her are you hurt or you injured? I, well, because I like I've legitimately had back problems. You saw it last year. I tried to play in the spring scramble, and I probably shouldn't have, but I could barely swing a golf club. That to me is a back injury. But you go out and like he just kind of looked rusty, not like someone that was actually <laughs> like actually hurt. Now, granted, no offense to you. He's like a peak athlete in the I, game of golf. I mean, look, I'm like the I'm like the perfect perfect picture for peak male performance. <laughs> Rory's Rory's got to catch up. Yeah, no, you could be right, but but that that even makes it my point even more valid. He should be able to handle an injury a lot better than me. Sure, and he's got you know physios and people you know again. But it's just funny. It's like that. you know, I, I, and and maybe he probably is maybe pretty hurt or you know at least. Maybe tweak something because I've had like yeah things in my back or and I'm sure you've had the same thing where you're like it doesn't like hurt hurt but it, it definitely doesn't feel normal right and maybe and maybe that's it I don't know but I heard that and I was like no you want to see a back problem like like I was hitting driver 210 yards that day you know when I tried to golf yeah. so. We'll just wait till you know his daughter jumps on his arm and dislocates <laughs> his shoulder. You know. That's too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Way too soon. Oh, God. All right. T6. I, I thought this was such an interesting group of players because it was like every one of them played exactly how they played all season within this little <laughs> four-round yeah. tournament. Uh, Colin Morikawa goes like, out in 61, flips the tournament on his head, tied yeah, for the what lead did he, right what did he at the bat. At? He started at like, what, one under, two under, something like that. Yeah, if that. He was like in the twenties and yeah. yeah. So yeah, that that had to be right. Uh goes sixty one, sixty four, and then drops seventy three, seventy two on the weekend. <laughs> and it felt like there were so many times this year with Morikawa where it was like, Oh shit, he's back. And then it would just go away. Yeah, and like here we go. Again. As quick as a gay man it gone. Yeah. I think yeah. Rom broke him at the tournament of champions when he Probably. lost that five shot lead in, in that like tournament. six holes or whatever yeah. it was. And I don't, but I mean, hey, whatever. He's like I said, it's still in there. We've seen it a couple of times, but it's just weird that he. And I that's exactly why you know he needs to be on the Ryder Cup team. He's gonna be on the Ryder Cup yeah, team, yeah. but like just for the sixty-one, you want him on. There, you know what I mean? Exactly. He's, he could literally go out and fill it up better than anybody. It's so weird because it feels like he he has like the most sustainable game because of the way he strikes the ball. Yes. So I don't I don't even know, like know how seventy three seventy two happens for him. It shouldn't on the weekend. So yeah, that was one. And then Fleetwood just classic Fleetwood back, back door seventy one seventy nothing going. And then sixty five sixty six on the weekend. He's, he's already out of it, 10. but he's just, yeah, yep, yeah. It's pretty then, normal stuff there. Good lord, Scotty Scheffler. This is a real problem. It's a problem for Rome. Ball. Uh, I'm terrified for him. Yeah. We and the heckling, like it's only gonna make it worse. Like he's uh, gonna get out there and he's gonna get heckled with okay, can we can we classify this as he definitely has the yips now? Like they are full blown yips. I don't yeah, they are. I haven't seen his stroke enough to know if it's a yip, but it's definitely like But it doesn't like it's almost like he's double crossing putts. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Yips can come in all different forms. They can come in the Will's Alatoris form. We've all seen the video. 
it makes you want to puke looking at his putting stroke. That is one form of the yips. But the other form of the yips is like you just can't make putts. Like you're just not reliable with it. Yeah, it's all and, mental. And for someone for him, of his caliber me. to be missing some of these putts that he misses, it's it's full blown yips. And the, and I will tell you the 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 correcting yips is not getting in front of a crowd that's going to be heckling you about having the yips. I'm going to tell you right now, if that was a European guy and I was at the Ryder Cup, I'd be talking about. I would be following him around all day, talking, yelling out about yips. It's going to happen, and it's going to be a real problem in Rome. I, I I've got a bad feeling about it. it's. He I don't think he's going to have the Ryder Cup, and I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think he's going to have the Ryder Cup he did at Whistling Straits. Because that Ryder Cup went about as perfect as, as it could have gone for him. Yeah, and it's a big difference being the number one player in the world versus you were the twelfth guy in that team. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're kind of free rolling it at yep. that point compared to now, where they're actually counting on it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, it's it's a problem. This like, okay, so he shoots. He starts off ten under. He's in the lead by two. He's only eleven under for the week by the end of it all. So he's only one under for the tournament without the starting strokes 71 65 73 70 he gained 2.19 strokes t to green which is actually kind of a bad week for him yeah so it was it's like crazy i think it was like 11th or 12th in the field yeah but yeah not a great week for him uh he lost five and a half strokes putting and the first nice. in the so last round to the blade putter yeah so in the first and the last round he lost more than three strokes in each of those rounds uh i think he wants I don't know. Like, I, I feel like he has to want to make that putter work or something to go back to that. I mean, it's not like the, the mallet he went to was helping either. I mean, it was better than that. I guess, but at least that one he's got like some history with, right? <laughs> I, I like he's guess. one of I don't masters know. and a players with it. I don't know. I, I, it's at this point, it's I don't know what. He in reality, and and he probably can't do most much of this because you know, with the Ryder Cup coming up and stuff like that. But you know, taking some time off and not grinding as hard as he's probably been grinding on the putting green would probably do him some good. Um, because it's it's not they've showed his putting stroke. It I don't think it's anything mechanical. At this point, it's just in his head. And time off is the only thing that's good. Obviously, he can't type, take time off during the FedEx Cup playoffs. I mean, I guess he could have and probably still made the finals or whatever. Um, but time away is going to be the only cure for this, I feel like. Yeah, just put the clubs up for a bit. Don't touch the putter for I mean, like two weeks. He could legitimately take two weeks off after this. I think so. And get right N- back Not even it. like – maybe even take a week off where he doesn't practice at all. But time away is – because I think he's, it's at the point where he's putting all this work in to try to fix this, and it's not getting better, and that's probably making him more frustrated, and it's leading to worse and worse results. Do you think it's tougher to putt when you're putting for a score, or when it's like for a hole, like in a match play setting? Well, I guess there's two. I guess there's two answers to that question. To me, okay. When you're putting for a score, yeah, you might be a little more on defense, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you don't want to like blow something by or whatever. Um, but there's going to be some meaningful putts in the Ryder Cup that mm-hmm. he's, you know, one he's going to have to make, and two, it's it, it, he's going to make defensive. He's going to make very defensive strokes on. I just feel like it's going to. So I guess that for me. It, Putting with playing for strokes is harder. I agree. That's my take. Too. But when you're really struggling like that, I think every putt's going to seem almost impossible. But yeah. I think it's putting for strokes. You, you do. Have, there are some putts where you're like, okay, like I want to make this, but I also have to leave myself a tap in. You know, if you're yeah. for whatever reason. Um, if you're playing in a team match play event, you know, you can. There could be yeah. instances where it doesn't matter. Like if, you're, if, you miss, if your partner's yeah. got a kick in for par. And you're eight feet for birdie. You can kind of yeah. freely stroke the ball. So, okay. Uh, well, I had to go through this. Kyle Porter again with just phenomenal tweets summarizing Scotty's season. Uh, his final numbers on the year: he was first in strokes gained driving, approach, tee to green, total, 
greens and regulation, scoring average, money earned, top tens, and aggregate score at the majors. And he won twice. <laughs> but he was also 145th in putting. 50th in putting. 150th. Oh, I thought he was 145th. Sorry, 100, 150th. 150th. Worse My than bad. he thought. So, My bad. <laughs> just five spots off. Still pretty bad. Absolutely crazy. Like, yeah, that's ball striking season. With, the, with that, with those, with those stats, you with ball striking, you would have assumed he won like five or six times at the very minimum. I mean, he was Tiger Woods, tee to green, and then he was old Lucas Glover on the greens. <laughs> that, which, which is so, which brings up a crazy stat. Like with just this ties into his ball striking this year. Did you know? I think it was like two thousand two or two thousand one. Tiger hit 102 fairways in a row. That's wild, especially for Tiger, honestly. Yeah, because he was always a little, a little wild erratic. scramble, make an unbelievable birdie yeah. every once in a while. But 100, but like, I truly believe, I bet I could almost guarantee with how Scotty hit the ball this year, there's some kind of crazy stuff. Like, it might not be 102, but yeah. I bet if you went back, like the tournament he's won. He probably hit like sixty fairways in a row or something, which is mm-hmm. just obscene. But I, with those stats, I would that would not surprise me. Just absurd, absurd season. On the flip side of that, uh, we got to figure out who needed the back nine six back this week. Dude, can we just give it to Scotty for just like the overall? You know what? That honestly, it, I saw your. I, I thought we about can go it. through. We can go through the nominations, but he might need to enter the discussion. So I was taking that angle with it because when I looked through the scores, there wasn't anybody that did anything like. No, they kind of tore. They kind of tore up East Lake. Yes, I think there might have been like a seventy four or seventy six here and there. Like that was about it, and it wasn't like that bad. Uh, so I thought about like, all right, just like who looked like they were not having fun out there. Scotty was the tops of that list, like the very top of that list. So like definitely in consideration. Uh, so what I did, because this is like a, just a complete free crack giveaway of money, uh, I wanted to take a look at like, all right, who cost himself some money? And I think I narrowed it down to one guy. Who, yeah, that, that, yeah, go ahead. But that was bad. It was a bad stretch. We've been a little worried about John Rom for the last like month because he just hasn't played great. Uh, <laughs> just like not even played great. Like he's been playing bad. <laughs> yeah, Just flat out bad. And th- so he was what he came into the week. I think he was in third or fourth with the starting strokes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sunday. So he was sitting already at eleven under, right? Yeah. So that would have been, I think, like in that T six group. Yep, and he got at the three. I think he got at the three under, like in the first seven holes. Or he, was like two, that. he was two. He was two under holes. through six. So, or two under. Okay, sorry. You know, even that that jumps him up into like you know third or fourth place territory yep. at that point. Uh, but then he bogey seven, bogey's eight, bogey's nine. So we're one over at the turn. We've been here before. We know what you have to do. You have to. And if you're not gonna get the six pack, maybe I don't know. Get maybe John Rom's like a Paloma guy or something. Yeah, I don't know. get you get you a little tequila. A little mar- yeah, little tequila. Something. Uh, he doesn't makes a turn. Bogey's ten, bogey's eleven. That's five bogeys in a row. I believe Wyndham Clark did that recently, and we gave it to him in a similar stretch. Yeah, as much as I want to give it to Scotty, that stretch was bad. I, I saw that when I turned it on. Didn't make a birdie the rest of the round, and then bogey's 18, which is a par 5 that a lot of guys were <laughs> getting pretty easily. I think I think as much as I want to give it to Scotty, because it looked like Scotty was getting held at gunpoint to be out on the golf course. Like it was like blink twice if someone's holding you hostage. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what he looked like out there. But – Rom also had that same look after he booked five holes in a row. Because when I turned it on, right when the, the rain delay came back, they came mm-hmm. back from the rain delay, Rom was not having fun. No. he uh, And I think he was on like 13 at that point. Like he had just kind of righted the ship with a couple pars. But it, he, he looked like he was having zero fun out there. Well, I wouldn't either because he just tumbled down the leaderboard with a 74 on Sunday. Uh, like I said, if he had just shot even par, he finishes T6, which is in that group of guys that made $2 bucks. He wound up making like 650 k so he pretty much cost himself at least a million dollars on that bogey train. It was an expensive ride on the bogey train. <laughs> My God. Yeah, so going from you know finishing inside the top 10 he to He could have gone to space for that, just, what, it, what that, that bogey train cost yeah, him. Exactly. <laughs> Call up Elon. Uh, 
so yeah, John Rahm, I think, needed the back nine. Yeah, back we're gonna give week. it to him. It's a sort of a cumulative award for the last few weeks for him. Yeah, for oh, the big guy. It seemed like he was scaring the award. Yeah, the last couple weeks, but we're yeah, he's he's getting it this week. Congratulations, John. John, add this to your trophy trophy case. Yeah, and your six. Put it next to your six hundred and seventy thousand dollars. <laughs> Uh, See, small investment that could have saved you a million. I right? mean, yeah. I mean, East Lake, they're probably charging like $50 a six pack. So it cost them 50 bucks, but well I think it. that's a very good investment. Well worth it. Uh, we already mentioned all the money given away at this thing. They already restructured the playoffs. You know, you it was the top 70 that got into the first round. They cut it to 50 and then 50 to 30 for the tour championship. <laughs> And then they do this whole starting strokes situation, which honestly I feel like if they're going to keep it to a stroke play event, feels fine. But the obvious solution for this thing, if we're talking about format wise, God, is some kind play. of match play. It's a the playoffs. Like there has to be like a knockout element, and especially with the match play going away next year, seems like ripe for. Something here. Yeah, that or, you know, and then we were kind of talking about solutions before we started tonight. And, you know, like, how do you place guys one through 30 only playing one match? It's like, well, you can have a consolation bracket. And I just kind of thought about this. Why can't you have double, double, like, you can almost do like some kind of double elimination. Sure. You know, if you lose twice, you know, your first two matches, like, you're going to be in the bottom 10, you know what I mean? Or whatever. And then, Wherever you fall within that is kind of is what it is, and maybe that's based on how you came in, like seed wise. If you if you lose twice and you're in the bottom ten of the thirty, you know you get ranked from the bottom ten based on how you came into it. So if you're like the five seed and lose your first, you would be the highest of the top, you know, the bottom ten. And you could do something like that. Anything at this point, I feel like would be more entertaining than watching an sure. exhibition where. Guys start with leads and all that stuff, which is just like so anti golf. <laughs> but I mean, before we get to the wild idea that I would love to see, I something like just make like Thursday, even if it's just Thursday, it could be Thursday, Friday, do some sort of qualifying if you want to keep the top 30 thing or the top 28 or 20, whatever number works. Yep. Do some qualifying, make a cut or seed them based on that, and then play weekend match play. Then, and maybe guys with the top like four or eight or whatever get buys or something. Sure. Yep. Uh, if you don't want to do that and you just want to like have like a sweet, like do the top eight or whatever, I was looking at just like the standings and I, to see what the matchups would be if you were doing. So one versus eight would have been Scotty versus Brian Harmon. Give it to me. The guy that can't putt, dude that's been putting his ass <laughs> off all season. Uh, the two seven matchup would be Vic and Cantlay. Oh. Uh, you get six three, Rory and Max. Like, feed me. That's what I, I mean. And then four or five. Yeah. Rom, Lucas Glover. Oh See if Glover God. can go on a Cinderella ride. <laughs> I mean, like that's just the top eight. But like, think of, there's so many matchups in there that could happen. It'd have been fun. I mean, it would have been more fun than what we got. Yeah, and maybe it was because, and in, in in fairness to the PJ Tour, there wasn't a lot of drama. There really hasn't been a ton of drama the last couple of years in this. But maybe that's why we feel the way we do. Is it kind of felt like Victor pretty much had it in hand. I mean, he still had to shoot 63 on Sunday to kind of hold serve, but I don't know. It would have, I felt like that would have been, there had to be more entertainment value in that than watching guys essentially play an exhibition match for millions and millions of dollars. Yeah. So, I mean, if we can't get some sort of match play, let's just get wild. I want, I don't know how many players <clears throat> this would work for or whatever, or how we even get to this point, but I want to get like shootout style. Put the 18 million, stack them up right there on the that first tee. That would be tee. fucking awesome. Send eight dudes off the first <laughs> tee and just start eliminating. Hey, let's, let's see who's got the straight up shootout style. The wavos. <laughs> eight, eight guys on one hole, cut it down to like every I hole or something. That. Do something like that. Just something fun. I love that. Yeah, I think it would be sweet. That would be awesome. It'd be more fun than what we had. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, there's I just like enough that. stroke play, and then we're doing this manufactured thing with like. You know, Scotty's getting 10 and Vic's getting 8 and whatever. In the end, like we said, Xander shot 19 under and had to come from way back. Yeah. And Victor, while he did, like you said, shoot 63 on Sunday, like 
still had a five, comfy five shot lead because of that starting stroke difference. He so. would have had to do something pretty drastic for him to lose that lead. Yeah, the way that he was playing. Right. I mean, but so I, I think anything would have been more fun than what we got for sure. Okay. Well, uh, speaking of fun, one cup to another. The one that matters, the Ryder Cup. I was trying to tie in a two girls, one cup uh, analogy there, but it just didn't come to me quick enough. God, that's that's bad. <laughs> uh, I'll just let that one sit there. Uh, Ryder Cup, Zach Johnson makes his captain picks tomorrow. Your captain. Uh, Our captain. <laughs> it's we now. <laughs> Is, oh, now it's we. Okay, I guess maybe once the team's set, I'll have to start saying we. I mean, we already knew who the top six were. Have you changed your opinion on any of the? No, I pretty much. St- I, I mean, at this point, I would say I was kind of fighting for Glover a little bit. I'm a okay with definitely not having him on the team. He kind of seems like being at his age. He's he hit a wall the last couple of weeks, and I don't think. I mean, I was slightly surprised just because of how he was playing, but. Are you uh, are you now banging the drum for Keegan? Well, let's talk about the Guardian article that came out today. Okay. Because, so it was reported that, for the, I can't remember his name from the Guardian, had reported that the captain's picks were going to be, from what he was hearing, were going to be Ricky, JT, uh, Colin Murakawa, right? Um Oh gosh! Um, also, before you get canceled, her name Betsy Reed was the reporter. I thought it was I thought it was a guy that was like Matt something. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? You're right. Yeah. I stand. I'm going to get canceled. No, uh, you and Murray. Yes, who reported it? Sorry, uh, Betsy is the editor. Yes, at the bottom of this. Uh, so he ca- they came out and said that Spieth, Ricky, JT, um, Colin Morikawa, and I'm drawing a blank on the fifth one. Uh, oh, Kepka. Yeah. That those were the five picks that were pretty much set. They are set in stone. Those are those guys are going to the Ryder Cup. That there was one pick outstanding that they were still discussing between Keegan, Sam Burns, Cam Young, and uh, Tony Fee. Tony Fee now. Um, at that point, if you if you ask me, especially how he played this weekend, of all those guys who I want on the team, I would take Keegan Bradley over all those guys right now. Um, so I would definitely start beating the drum for Keegan. If those are truly the picks and those are the other names that they're talking about possibly getting in the last spot. Yeah. You know whose fault this is? This is Tony Finau's fault. If Tony just played the way he should have played, he would be on the team. I think so too. Cause he's an all time good vibes he's, guy. He's played a good, great, good locker room great guy. in Paris has, you know, experience in several team events at this point. <laughs> Uh, I think if you went like historic stats and numbers and like course fit and stuff, he of those four, I think he's probably the best fit. Yeah, I would agree with that. Because uh, that's he's, probably why he's still in the discussion. I think that's the only way. It has and, to be and, like and, a and there has thing. to be some kind of analytics behind it because we talked about mm-hmm. it. They do they use some analytics. Like it's not the driving force behind every pick, but yeah, you know, they might be looking at analytics and being oh, okay. Like this guy plays. Courses with, you know, he's really good shots approach and stuff like that. Maybe that's what they're they're using to maybe have that discussion of possibly putting him on the team. I don't think he should be on the team. Um, one, he doesn't have a major, and I think you don't get that kind of leash if you don't have a major. Um, and he just hasn't played that well this year. Like, at, at, like hardly ever has he played well this year. He played well I mean, in the 3M, and that was about it, like, for the most part. I, I th- The crazy thing is, because of the the wraparound schedule, I think he won twice this season, technically. Which is so stupid. But it was, like, it's in the so fall, stupid. right? Yeah, uh, yeah. He's, his strokes gain just kind of dropped off a cliff, really, towards, yeah. you know, this. I mean, I'm trying to look at it now. Like I said, he played well. I think he played well at the 3M, and then he played the one. I think he played well down in Mexico. As he, well, oh, he—that's the one he won. Yeah, so he won one in the, the fall won. and he okay, won in Mexico. I but the that only other player the in that field was Rom, basically. Yeah, he he won in Mexico. So it, the Century uh, Tournament of Champions, the start of the year, he was basically like a two strokes gained approach level player, right? Like two to two and a half. Uh, right now, 
he's only gaining about 1.3 for a round. Like, that's a pretty big drop-off. Yeah, that's, I mean, pretty much a full shot. Let's call it a full shot. Yeah, it's more than a full shot, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, um, he's had a couple somewhat okay finishes. Like you said, the 3M. But I, I just think I think there's probably some analytics to why he's still in the discussion. And I honestly think they look at the roster and they go, holy shit, we do not have a lot of experience on this roster. And he's a good locker room guy. Yeah. Um, I think the best fit to go on foreign soil and be able to handle the crowds the way they can would be Keegan. Keegan loves the Ryder Cup. He's Over the last week, he's mentioned that he, that's all he thinks about. Um. He's fiery. He, I mean, we've seen him in past Ryder Cups be pretty fiery. You um, you need that yeah. when, you, when you're when you not playing at home. He would be the best fit. I just feel like Sam Burns, Cam Young would go over there and just get absolutely chewed up and spit out. See, I, I, I could see that happening to Sam just because his game is so volatile erratic. anyway. Yeah. I think Cam would kind of, it would be more like a slow bleed for him. It's like if he's just not making putts, then yeah, he's going to get beat. But like I think he'd be solid enough tee to green where he would still be in matches. It, but those guys, it's like okay, you're taking Cam because of the potential and the ceiling and you know the future, quote unquote. Sam Burns would be like a hook, like I said last time, like hook Scotty up with his boy, let him come yep. on the trip. Yep. The more we sit here and talk, and I just kind of glance at Fiennes' numbers. <laughs> I don't hate it. He's hitting, okay, he's so hitting his iron. Let's put it this again. way. I think the way to answer this question is, and I'm going to phrase this question to you in this way. If they take Cam Young or Sam Burns and go over and just get both of those guys get waxed, the team gets waxed, they lose. Would you feel some regret? Like for having them on the team, one of them on the team. Like especially if – they both go like zero and three, or you know, zero yeah. one and three, or something, something along those lines. They just didn't play well. Would you have some regret in being like, "Shit, we left Keegan at home," or "Shit, we left Finau at home"? Uh, maybe with Sam, but I don't think so with Cam. Okay, I can tell you this: I would with those two. I think if you took Finau or Keegan, there would be like zero regret. If you went over there and lost with those guys, they'd be like, "Look." They played in it before. This shit happens, right? Yeah. Those other two guys, it'd be like, oh, you kind of took a chance on them. I know Cam Young's ninth in the points, but I still think with his track record of not winning a tournament, he's you're taking a risk taking him over there. To me, he feels like the better version of what Finau was before he started winning. That's probably fair. Because... Fina was like when he wasn't winning. Fina was like still contending in majors, and like he was just a super solid player. He just wasn't winning. Yeah. And Cam has been doing that too. Like he's sneakily yeah. got a pretty decent yeah, major guess, yeah. track record. It's yeah, not- and I guess I didn't have a problem with Fina being on those past teams. With I don't know. I I, I guess I wouldn't have a problem. So I, I'm getting off of the. I think those. Two I, are I'm my trying pick. not to let my Cam Young hate. I really don't like him. I like I told you before. That's I fine. was like, he's like a less likable Brooks Kepka. Yeah. And I don't know how that's possible. And I don't, he's just, I don't know. He's not like, he doesn't seem very fan friendly. Maybe that's all ties into it. But that maybe that's kind of clouding my judgment. And it probably is. But I don't know. I just, I think with Finau or Keegan on the team, you probably feel almost zero regret taking either one of those. You're like, look, these guys are proven leaders. They're proven Ryder Cup players, you take them. I don't think anybody has a problem with it. Well, I guess my thing at the end of the day is like, okay, if say you take Finau, and because you have good reasons that we just mentioned, uh, like if you have to hide him, hide him. Like he can go out and play a singles match, and if he's like, and your maybe 12 like one guy, match on Saturday, he's gonna be playing to... against I don't maybe Ludwig Aberg in his <laughs> yeah. first Ryder Cup, or which is I think they should take him, but it could be like. Bob McIntyre. Like, I'm going to yeah, take Tony Finau match. against this. He can you know 100% I mean? win that match. So I'm not too concerned about who gets this spot. For me, I think it would either be Cam Young or Tony. I think those are the two I would I would be down to right now. 
That's fair. I mean, I, I don't get think it. Sam's been consistent enough, and I get it with Keegan, but it still and, feels and, like. And, the, and, the, and here's the other thing you have to think about because we we kind of get it right, and most I think half of golf fans probably understand this. But with someone that's like relatively new to golf, or maybe he's like not a huge golf fan, and they find out, well, you have this ranking of points, and you have these twelve guys, but yeah. they only take six. If you take enough people outside that top 12, I mean, they're already taking, according to the reports, they're already taking Ricky. He's not in the top 12. You're already pulling the trigger on JT. He's not in the top 12. Right. You take another guy like Finau and you go over there and get absolutely waxed. Like, regular people are going to be, they won't understand that. They're like, why, why didn't you just take the 12 best, right? The 12 most points. I think Zach, I truly think, I thought before that he was just going to be like, he's going to be super chalk. I think with this report, it shows that he's not going chalk. Like he's going to, he, he does no problem stepping outside the box. And he's, you know, again, I think he kind of said that when I said, he said the comment that he was like, look, we're not, you know, we're going to take the, there's a bunch of combination of teams. I think we can go over there and win with. But we're gonna take the best combination of players that I think we can that gives us the best opportunity to win. And that to me probably means a lot of leadership, a lot of experience. And that maybe it is Fina. I mean it I it would not surprise me. I'm talking myself into it sitting here, and I don't even know where this is coming from, but I, and I honestly am. maybe I you know, I didn't look at the stats enough, but when I saw that I'm like, really? But maybe it's not that bad. I mean, and, and look, he's got it he's got some under his belt. Like he's played these team events. He's not a, you know, he's not a rookie. If he's a rookie, we're not even talking about this right now. Right. But I think the biggest thing when you go overseas, when you play in these things, is like you need leadership. Look, he he's might be the most likable guy in the PGA Tour. Amongst the players, especially fans. Like, he's probably top three most likable guys on tour. Yeah. And yeah. that, you might need that in the locker room if you go out on Friday morning and just get absolutely smoked. And it's like, oh, shit, here we go again. And you might need a Tony Finau in the locker room or send them out there. Like, all right, we got wax. Like, let's sit, let's sit some of the thoroughbreds and send Tony out there. Because he actually played well overseas last time. Yeah, so, I mean, he was when one he three of the and one best. or something. Yeah, he, he was, was like one of the, one of the only players. ones over yeah. 500. So. It was like him and JT, basically. <laughs> So, I don't know. Yeah, I, that's, that would be interesting to see. I, All right, what do you think? Who is going to get that pick? Like, not I, not what you think, but, like, what you think Zach is going to do. Okay, so what I think Zach's going to do, I think he's going to take Keegan. Okay, interesting. Um, He's not going to go chalk and take Cam Young. I think at this point, if he takes Ricky and JT, he's reaching outside the box already. And I think he's it kind of frees him up to be like, all right, you know, and Keegan's inside the top 12, I should say. Yeah, he's 11. But he's taken him over a guy that's ninth in points. He's, you know, he's taken a guy, he's taken him over a guy that's ranked just above him in points. So, but I think he's proven that he's going to, re- if he if he does, those picks are true, he's going to reach outside the box. I think he's going to take Keegan. I still think it's Cam Young, but I'm, I'm leaning less and less. I thought for sure when you – you had me convinced last week that it was going to be Cam Young. Like, Cam Young's in. I think last I don't, week – I'm yeah. not so convinced of that now. I honestly – I don't know. Like I said, I don't know why. I I think at last week I was like 80% sure it was going to be Cam Young. I think now I'm down to like 50, I think it's 55. 50, 50. Like, yeah. I'm 55, 45. To me now – I think it's Finau is the other guy. To me now, I think it's – for Cam, at least what I, the way I look at it, it's probably 30 out – or 30 in – 70 out. Okay. Yeah. But again, I just think, I think Zach, Zach, I mean, he's played in five of these. Our captain's played in five of these. Okay. He's got a winning record too, mind you. The guy knows Ryder Cups. Get out of here. Okay. We're just, I trust my captain. And I trust that he's going to leave Cam off the team. So. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go through Zach Johnson's career. Hold on. One time. No. Skip. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Uh, I might just do my a solo, a solo podcast, pod, yeah, and I'll just go through Zach. That, that, that's actually not a terrible idea. It sounds like as a long as you don't idea. have to be involved. I don't think you probably really care. No, I'll listen probably. <laughs> probably not, or I'll download. Maybe won't listen. 
So, uh, an homage to our captain. Oh my god! All right. Well, <laughs> on to happier places. No, uh, just kidding. Uh, patio beer time. Anything goes on the patio. I think. Are you up? I, I am. I, okay. I am up. You are up. And I, I'm asking these. This is selfish, but I'm asking this question because there's something that needs to be discussed on the show when we talk about this question. Oh my god! It's nothing crazy, but. Okay. It's something that I need to get out because it's, there's been a lot of hate in my heart since I've since this. So, um, what is a new show that you've watched recently that you've liked, and then one that you've not liked, like something new that you've never watched before? Yeah, one that I like and one I don't like. Yes, one that I like is The Bear. Have you heard of this? Or I've heard of it. I've not watched it. Yeah, it's a. It's on Hulu. It's like produced by FX, but it's not on FX. It's only on Hulu. Like F- FXX or something, whatever. No, no, they no. Put I think it. it's like the company or whatever. Uh, okay, okay. Paid gotcha. to produce it. Gotcha. And it's on Hulu. Really good. What uh, is it about? I'm like halfway through the second season. Uh, oh, God. What is it about? Basically, this guy who's like a fine dining chef, his his brother apparently commits suicide and leaves him the restaurant that he was running, family restaurant. Oh shit! I think and you so were he comes back me home this. to Chicago is where it's at, and he takes over the restaurant. And they wind up trying to turn it into like a fine dining place. And uh, I, like I said, I'm only halfway through the second season, so I don't really know where it's okay. going to end. But it's really I've heard good. about it. Yeah, the acting's phenomenal. Music's great. They're like 30 minute episodes, so it Perfect. goes quick. That matters. Yeah, that does matter. So, and it's just I don't know. They're it's one of those shows too where like even like the B-roll kind of stuff fascinates me because it's like a lot of cooking and you know people chopping like just skills knife skills I do not have but wish I did. Uh, so that's one I like. One I don't like. We don't watch much TV, so I. You know what? Okay. Uh, look, I'm big into the Marvel stuff. All right. So one of the latest MCU shows was uh, Secret Invasion. It's like about Nick Fury with Samuel Jackson's character. I, I know about it. I, yeah. Mega disappointing. Not good. Yeah. Oh, I watched it all because I have to, but was super disappointed in that show. Hmm. Is that what is that on Disney Plus? I'm Disney assuming? Plus. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't have a other good answer outside of that because we don't. Like I said, we don't watch much. So, right now I'm watching Ballers. You ever seen Ballers? Heard of Ballers? Haven't seen it. HBO, The Rock. It's actually on Netflix right now. I. I remember when it was on HBO, I never got the chance to watch it. Watch it. It's fantastic. It, essentially, The Rock is the next NFL player. He wasn't good with his money. He becomes a financial advisor for all these NFL guys. Super good. It's so it, it's like serious. There's some serious like it's very much like entourage. I think that's probably why I like it. Like some serious moments, but there's it's funny too. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's good. Rock. I've never been crazy about his acting, but it's, I've always thought he was like, it was almost too much wrestler involved in his, his acting. Sure. But he's actually really good in this show. Um, I think it's just cause it, he plays essentially that someone that's him, right? Like he's playing an ex football player. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, that's what he is. So love that. I'm, I'm like in season, there's only four seasons and I think I just started season four yesterday. Gotcha. So super good show. This is what I wanted to talk about. So I watched Swamp Kings on Netflix. Oh my god! All right, so I'm thinking in my head as you were talking, like I needed to give an honorable mention. To go ahead, you go. The super disappointing. Honestly, it's a good show. Like it's it's well put together, and the stuff they talk about is good. That team was incredible. I mean, you see some of the people in the names on those teams, and you're like, holy shit, how did they ever lose a game? Like, in five years or four years or whatever it was. They should have never lost a single game. I mean, that, those teams were, like, loaded, loaded. Mm-hmm. Like, even compared to the Alabama teams that we know that were like, oh, my God, those teams are so good. No. Florida was better. Like, these Florida teams were exponentially better. But what was so disappointing about it is one, it feels like Urban Meyer and was sitting in the like in the room when they're interviewing Tim Tebow, and they were just like they had talking points, like they got together and they had talking points about sure what they, they were going to talk about. It was that that frustrated me. Aaron Hernandez doesn't get mentioned at all. Yeah, that's just bad. I mean, you're not look, even doing a service. You can't to even tell the, the story. No, without Aaron Hernandez, exactly. Like you can't. You can't tell the story about those teams. 
And they don't, let's see, they don't mention Aaron Hernandez. They don't mention Riley Cooper. They don't mention, I mean, they don't mention half of these stories. They don't mention Carlos Dunlap's DUI before the 2009 National Championship or SEC Championship game. Mm. How does that not get mentioned? Like, there's so many things that happened that they're like, well, like, these bad things happen, but they're, I mean, they were such a good team. And these, they, look, it's Tim Tebow. Like, he's such a good guy. Like, that's how the whole. Allegedly. That's how the whole thing, like, unraveled. Because, like, they started talking about the arrest, and you're like, oh, here we go. Like, we're going to get into the thick of things. We're going to talk about how Aaron Hernandez was running around being a gang member while he was a member of this team. And then all of a sudden it was, like, discussion of discussion of arrest ends, and it's, like, back to Tim Tebow saying how he was going to be a leader of the team or something. I'm like, you t- what are we doing here? Like you literally all the talking points. And honestly, for better or worse, what made those teams super interesting was the fact that they were all really bad people. Kind of like most of them were really not good citizens. They did a lot, a lot of bad things. And I'm sure there's, that's prevalent in every division, major division one football team. But when you are the number one team in the country and you have somewhat of a dynasty, it should be talked about a little more than it was actually talked about. Yeah, so I haven't watched Swamp Kings yet. Uh, I did watch, these are all like part of that Untold series on Netflix, uh, the Giant Manziel one, which I also found, th- here's the problem with, yeah, I, I watched that one the too. With this, so the Giant Manziel one was great, like it was fun. The thing is, and I think it's probably the same thing that kind of you're getting to here with Swamp Kings, is like, these deserve like, the 30 for 30 OJ Simpson, like six part series, deep dive type stuff. Yeah, not these so, hour long. So Swamp Kings is four episodes long. Okay. So it is, I it is four that. episodes. I thought the Johnny Manziel one could have been, at it least, went way too quick, at least two to three, maybe even four episodes. Cause there's a lot, there was a lot going on there. A ton. I mean, a lot. Um, but that one was pretty good. I just, it felt like it went too quick. Yeah, it just went too quick. And I felt like it did a pretty good job of, Telling both sides of the story. It's like, this dude was a shithead. But he also, like, you kind of have a soft spot in his heart. It's like, man, that guy had a lot of pressure. It, you know, kind of, you know, leaned on him. And he had some mental health issues that no one really talked about. And so I thought it did a good job of showing both sides. He has a line in there that I need to find a way to work into, like, just <laughs> Which more often. He, I forget what it is, but there were people criticizing because he didn't, like, re like watch film or read play play or anything <laughs> and he he just goes fuck your practice best player in the country <laughs> and i was like hell yeah i gotta find a way to work that in and i think i yeah that i I remember that part i do remember uh, that part it, but you know when he's talking about it, he's like he was like hundred thousand dollar bender he was like it was a five million dollar bender yeah. it's like jesus christ hell yeah dude hell yeah so you're telling me i have to watch through like Four episodes yeah. of an Urban Meyer, Tim Tebow, man and crush. Honestly, like, it is a decent amount of Urban Meyer, but it's mostly Tim Tebow. Uh, and what I get frustrated with, so you ready? Anytime they talk to him, like, we just, we couldn't, you know, we were, and he was like whispering into the microphone. He's like, we just, you know, we could have been great. And I'm like, why the fuck are you whispering, dude? Like, uh, it was like, uh, like the emphasis and like, look, I'm sure... From everything we heard, he does, and despite even if like 10 years from now we find out he's a bad person, he has done a lot of great things like for communities, like he raises sure. a ton of money for all this stuff, like good for him. But like I, what I've never liked, even when those teams were good when we were in like, you know, college or whatever, he seems so corny and it just drives me fucking insane. It this... does. It drives me insane. Yep. And it's not even like the corner, like, dude, good for you. Like, you're super religious. And I love, like, dude, I love that you are, like, that committed to something. Like, good for you. But it's like, it's not that. It's like the whole, like, corny leadership thing. It's the Russell Wilson effect, man. Oh. Oh. Like, That's they, a good comp. They act like what they think leaders should act like rather than, like, actually act like a lead. You know what I mean? You see what I mean? Like, there's yeah. a difference. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's, it's the that's Russell Wilson. It. It's the Russell Wilson effect. Ooh, that's good. And I think Russell Wilson's way worse than Tim Tebow because I actually think Tim Tebow, when you watch the documentary, 
he was like legit the only guy not going out and getting fucked up every week. <laughs> like, so like to me, like if you're trying to win a national championship, to high, you know, Division One football, there's not a lot of time in there that that like, you should be getting fucked up. And like these dudes were going out like every night, and Tim Tebow was like not going to parties, which again, good for him, dude. Like that is like what a true leader. Russell Wilson's a fake leader, but. That yeah, is showing that. some leadership qualities within, but it, I, I don't know. It just, it just rubbed me the wrong way how some of the, especially the Aaron Hernandez thing. I was like, they just didn't even say anything about them. And I'm like, that's crazy. Crazy. What are we doing? The guy, they had an active gang member in their fucking locker room. Like yeah. that killed, they found out that he probably even killed people in college. Yeah. It's crazy. And you, not no discussion about it. None. Yeah. That's disappointing. I uh, and I truly believe it, I truly believe that Urban Meyer and Tim Tebow said if you bring up one thing about him, we're not doing this. It's yeah, that's highly possible. and and that's very sure. possible, and yeah. especially Urban Meyer. If they're like you mentioned Aaron Hernandez, he's not doing, he's not talking, and that's probably very accurate. Yeah, Ugh. his PR person probably told him that. This is gonna be tough for me to sit through, but I'll do it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> you have to do it just to watch it, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, All right, my. we'll move on to your question, but I had that had to be discussed. All right, that's no, that's a good one. Uh, mine's somewhat topical too. Look, I'm super basic. It's it's pumpkin spice latte season. They're back. Love, yeah, look, you're talking to a guy that loves yeah. some PSLs. Yeah, so, not DSLs, PSLs. <laughs> well, I like both of them. Good, Continue. Good lord. Uh, <laughs> so. Susie, we have a group uh, Snapchat with her family. I believe it was either Kelly or Christy. One of my one of my sister in laws sent a picture of it or whatever. It might even been Julie. I don't know. But anyway, my wife responds with, uh, she says, "Unpopular opinion: pumpkin spice lattes suck or whatever or bad." Now, this is um, this is a roundabout way to get to this question. You can think that. That's fine. The problem is she doesn't drink coffee. So my question to you is, can you rightfully like hate or rank something that you don't even like, like the category of to begin with? Absolutely not. Thank you. And then here's, here's my, here's my equivalent to it because like we, like we like these, you know, like the, the garage beer limes, we like yeah. summer shandies. And like, I think, Summer Shandy across the board is like, if you're not really a beer drinker, you can like get away with drinking that. Yeah. And I know a lot of people that are not huge beer drinkers that love Summer Shandies because it's like practically lemonade, right. you know. Um, but Danielle, my wife, not a big beer drinker. Every beer I give her is like, this sucks. That would be like, this is, I'll show her a beer and like, this is the greatest beer ever made. Like, tell me if you like it. Well, she's going to fucking hate it because she doesn't like beer. It, you can't judge something in a category that you like nothing in. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's insane. First My off, comp was like, that's like saying, okay. Does she like pumpkin flavored things though? No, she doesn't. So that's part that's of her another, argument. That, like, that's a whole other subcategory that she doesn't even like that you have to like to like that drink. Right. My My point was this would be like, okay, say you don't like ice cream. Right? Yep. That would be like saying, well, cookies and cream is the worst ice cream. But how do you know? Because you, <laughs> you don't, don't even, even like ice cream. cream. Or inversely saying that shakes suck. Like, you don't like yeah. ice cream, and then you say shakes suck. <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, there's there's ice cream and shakes, so... Yeah, yeah. That, it, 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 her point. Insane. Her point was, for the ice cream comp, right? She's like, well, I don't like mint stuff. So, like... Even if I didn't like ice cream, I would know that like the mint ice cream would be the worst, right? Because she doesn't like mint. So that's also her argument here with this with the pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> but and it coffee. still goes back that it's coffee, and if you don't like coffee, you're definitely not going to put. Yeah, you're if you I don't mean, you're like not coffee, like even the fucking sugariest drinks of all the coffees, right? Which she acknowledges. My my thing is, if you don't like the category, you are. You're, you, you cannot you, have an opinion on anything within the category, though. You don't get any opinion. Yeah. None. Zero. Zero opinion on something that you don't even like the category of th- what's being discussed. Okay. Oh, 
man, I need a, I need a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> I did, are they I, out for sure? I have yeah, I think so. I have not had That's the PSL, early. but I've had. I already had a pumpkin uh, cream cold brew. <laughs> those are those so. came out like two years ago, three years oh. ago. Those things are unbelievable yeah i i prefer those but and that's the thing is like i like pumpkin flavored things and i like coffee and it's like the best of both worlds look my man card's been gone a long time ago look yeah i'm a basic mitch that's <laughs> yeah, what it I is. Am a basic bitch too yeah i love it i'll wear that i'll wear it on my sleeve right, <laughs> right that was like good. the this... finer things in life <laughs> exactly uh, for sure all right God. that was a good i like yeah that's crazy that's crazy that was two. That was two good I hope things. Susie hears this. I know she listens. That's crazy, Susie. You're you're fucking crazy for thinking that you can have any discussion about coffee related subjects. I would like to point out for the record that uh, Justin called her fucking crazy. But I me. still love so, you. I still yeah. love you. This is all love. I just look. I got to call it as I see it, though. Yes. Uh, I mean that's the show. What else do we have to talk about? I can't. No, no, we don't have. Yeah, I think that's it. A shout out to Dan, the official superintendent of the Back Nine Six Pack. Message yeah. just late. We are still patio beer hats still going. Yes, I owe him one. And shout out to him. Started his new job. He told me about a month ago that he was taking another job. He's now the superintendent at Lasanaville. Nice. Shout out to him for you know being awesome and being a target for a, a great course. To pick up, um, yeah, I think he started this weekend. Maybe I saw him pick, post a picture of La Santaville like on Saturday or Sunday. Nice. So, no, it's awesome. Love but, to see it. Yeah, still have patio beers hats. I'm working on getting a Shopify. Um, yeah, we're gonna make it easier so you don't have to mess. I'm, wor- I'm working on getting a Shopify account up and running, and I kind of started that like this evening. So hopefully, we'll have an easier way for you to. Now, if you don't have our numbers or you want a hat or whatever, you can just order it on there and it'll ship right to your door. It's Especially beautiful. since golf season's kind of winding down, we're not going to see as many people. So we'll have to. Yeah, now we're going to start having to beat the, <laughs> hey, Christmas gift season. Yeah, yep, exactly, exactly. For the golfer in your life, don't buy uh, whatever. What? <laughs> I don't know, like a ball counter or something. Yeah. No, 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 no. We don't or, do that. Or titties. Yeah, like you've received <laughs> in the past. We don't We don't need these bad golf gifts. Uh Get a nice hat for the golfer in your life. Please do not buy a fucking gift on Amazon. For yeah. the love of God, buy a patio beers hat. There you go. Perfect. Um, yeah, but we still need a hey, subscribe, right? Always subscribe. Always reviews. follow. Reviews. Always five star reviews. Yada yada yada. Appreciate everybody out there. Uh, Labor Day weekend, right? So Hell we'll yeah. uh, we'll see you on the flip side of that. Pray. Hey, prayers up for my liver. Yeah. Your liver too. Hall of Fame weekend, draft weekend. It's a beautiful thing. One last thing. Sure. I do I do have a special pair of shoes I'm wearing on Friday. Of course you do. So, oh, you sent a picture of them. I know yeah. exactly what they are. Fuck yeah. They're gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be peacocking all over that fucking thing. Does it field. look good with your red Hall of Fame jacket? No. <laughs> That'd be sick though. <laughs> that would be sick. <laughs> all right. And on that note, right. we're out of here. See ya. Cheers. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Back Nine Six Pack. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Back Nine Six Pack for all your content needs. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers.